I'm through. I'm I'm drinking. I got both. I got Wolf of Reserve and tequila just in case I run out of either or. All right. So you, whatever. You just want to jump in? I got a couple of things I want to talk about, and then I want to do the drinking game. We'll probably say the drinking game for, for the after show because it's about I a longer bet. video. Okay, cool. I'm I'm put my water over here. <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna fly by the seat of my pants on this one. Full disclosure. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here we go. I think um, you need to say clearly what happened. Who gives a fuck? I don't care if you personally hit Candace Owens and her stinky cray cray. No good thing starts with, I was thinking about my ex. He ain't learned his lesson. That's a brother ain't gonna learn shit. I know this is gonna be a lot of people in hell. Let's keep this shit funky. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, welcome, welcome. What's unpopping, good people? Welcome to the unpopping show, home home of unpopular opinions. I'm T Storm, and as always, joined by my partner in crime, DJ Mike Swift. What's up, brother? What's happening, man? Um, right off the top, if you're coming in, pay the cost of admission. The cost of admission is a um, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can get. Uh, updates on when we release mm -hmm. new videos. And if you enjoy it, share it with your peeps. Um, shout out to my man, Beige, who has uh, started checking us out over on Spotify. So he listens regularly. And uh, he absolutely hates it when people do the yeah. like, comment, subscribe crap on stuff. So <laughs> <laughs> shout out to you, Beige, and Savannah. What's popping? Right, right, right. Um... Wow, what's going on? There's a bunch of shit that's happened this week. Um, I can just say to people watching, you may or may or listening or as well, you may or may not have heard or seen. Um, I'm a bit flustered because as we were setting up, Mike <laughs> noticed my um, smoke detector chirping. I had turned it off in my brain because I had messed with it early in the week already. Um, shout out to the previous owners of this house because they put a bunch, they had a gang of damn uh, smoke detectors in the house. Upstairs alone, there's like six of them. My house is not that big. I have four bedrooms, one in each room. That's perfect. But then they had four in the hallway. Why do you need four smoke detectors in the hallway? <laughs> you don't. Why? Look, the, look uh, yeah. that, that sounds to me like uh, dude's wife was trying to catch him smoking. <laughs> And she's like, I got a trick for your ass. I'm going to put one in she's every put corner. A bunch of, yo, yeah. it's crazy. So there's eight So there's eight smoke detectors upstairs alone, <laughs> one downstairs, one in the basement. And so when it starts chirping, I'm trying to track down which one is I took down to because it don't make sense to have two and four, you know, four in the hallway. I got one that's connected to the other ones. And then uh, ADT one that I, you know, I put up um, that came with the alarm system. Man, this shit was chirping in front, behind, up, down. Like, every time I was like, okay, I got it. And I go downstairs, this shit chirp again. I, wait, that's coming from upstairs. I go back upstairs. Chirp, nope, that's coming out of one of the rooms. I go in the room, cha chirp. And I'm changing the batteries each time. And it just never ceased. It just, I, I was like, you know what? I'm going to just snatch some of these damn things down. Maybe it's time I buy a, new, a whole new uh, smoke detector system in the house or something like that. But... I <laughs> So See, if you hear the chirping go off, I may just lose it. <laughs> like if, while we're recording, if you hear chirp, I may you might see me unravel right before your eyes on this uh, episode. So let's look for it. Look, Enjoy it. And and I, I the only reason I said something is because <laughs> in the uh, in the 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 manosphere, generally speaking, they say that the chirping smoke detector is the sound of a single woman. <laughs> it's like you know you know a woman is single if you can hear the smoke detector chirping in the background <clears throat> so i was like we we some of our audience is you know in the manosphere there's some crossover uh and i was just like yeah i don't want i don't want t to get <laughs> i don't want t to get ate up <laughs> yeah man no i'm it's, it's like 50 damn smoke detectors in this house I, it's the craziest thing i don't understand it so i got to patch up the holes where the other ones were that i took down 
and put up maybe I put up some lighting or something like that. Put some lights up, and instead of just you know a gaping hole where the smoke detector <laughs> used to be. Gaping hole. I think I dated her. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna stay, I'm gonna keep out of that one. I mean, <laughs> Which is what I should have done. Keep out of that. <laughs> <laughs> Word. Um, rest in peace to um, uh, Louis Louis Anderson and um, Meatball. No, Meat Meatloaf. Loaf. Sorry, yeah. Meatloaf. Um, uh, with the what what, what do they call them in in uh, Fight Club? The, with with the huge. With the huge tits, what was this? I can't this remember. Name? It's one of my favorite movies of all time, but uh, I can't yeah. remember. I do remember him from that movie. Um, yeah. Yeah, they, they passed, and then not too long ago, we lost uh, James M. Tume. Uh, Tume, who I worked with in New York. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, yeah, I, I worked with... Okay, so M. Tume was a part of a team. Um, they did a show called Open Line on KISS FM. And for those who are from New York City, remember 98.7 KISS FM, legendary um, radio station, where you would hear Red Alert and Chuck Chill Out on Fridays. And it's where Wendy Williams, you know, uh, rose to stardom. You know what I mean? If you listen to the first uh, first or second, the second Jodeci album, she has a, a sketch on the album where she's in interviewing, you know, uh, Jodeci. And she tags, she starts it off, 98.7 KISS FM. It was her show, Wendy Williams' mm-hmm. show. Um, but M2 May was part of Open Line, along with uh, Bob Slay, legendary uh, newsman here in New York, who passed away some years ago, dear friend. And then, unfortunately, um, a, less than a week later, about a week later, the third answer was what we called him. Um, Bob. Uh, um, oh, shoot. I'm 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 Bob Lee. Bob Pickett. And and to me, so Bob Pickett passed away like less than you know a week later, and it was it bugged me because when Entume passed, it was on my mind to reach out to Bob Pickett, and I didn't do it. Yeah, and he passed away. I, I that's one of them feelings you never. It's like it, it it's it is it's, it's eating at me. It is eating at me. Well, um, so we lost the the whole team of you know the original team of Open Line. Um, here in New York City. So uh, my, my condolences to the families um, and everybody. So, so for, for context, most people don't know that name, right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. James M. Tumay was, I guess, leader of the group M. Tumay. Uh, mm-hmm. And the biggest song that everybody knows from them is Juicy, Juicy Fruit. Right. Which is the song sampled by Biggie for his hit. Juicy, um, right? So Missy, you, Missy Elliott went went on to sample it as well. Yeah, I like mean a, a bunch of people a sampled. A bunch it. of people sampled it, but everybody knows it as from Biggie. From Biggie, it was all a dream. I used to, yeah, yeah. And two may had they had some some banging records that you know a lot of people don't know. But if you ever feel like you know digging on a on a Sunday and getting into some some good music, you you I, I highly recommend uh, M Two May. So we lost him. Uh, we also lost Sidney yeah. Portier. Sidney Portier as well, yeah. Yeah, man. Um, another note on M2 May. M2 May was um, part of the reason why um, we have, uh, we celebrate Kwanzaa. Oh, I didn't know that. Tell me that story. Yeah. I don't have all the details. <laughs> I just know he was a part of it. And I need to do my research. And I, I, I probably should have had the conversation with him when he was around. Right. Um, but, um. He's uh, he's one of the reasons, one of the people that, if not the person, they came up with the principles or put to help put together the principles of Kwanzaa. I had no idea about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hot records and Kwanzaa. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And these, you know, these are some deep brothers. They were they were really cool. Like when I had my issue with the NYPD, um, I was her- I was harassed by NYPD. Pulled out of a cab um, back in. Was that 20, 2010, 2011? Um, Bob Slade got pissed off when I told him about it. It was it happened on a Friday. I remember very distinctly. It happened on a Friday night. I was on my way home from a, a a comedy club. I had a flight to catch out the 
the following morning, Saturday morning, um, to Pittsburgh to open for for DL Hughley at Improv. And so it's happened like three o'clock, three o'clock in the morning in front of my house. Pulled me over. I got on my flight the next day. Got back home Sunday night. Went to work at Emmis Monday morning. And I told um I told Bob Slade about it. He was like, they what? And he gave me a list of names and people to reach out to. He again, this is he's a he's an activist, and um, you know, had been you know a part of the news. You know, he was the news director for Kiss FM from the from the beginning of Kiss FM. He was there through all the program directors until they sold Kiss FM. Wow! And he gave me a bunch of numbers and people. And one of those people. Um, at the time was Senator was he was a Senator Eric Adams now mayor of New York City Eric Adams and I reached out to to Mr. Adams and he you know he spoke very highly of Bob Slade and and um I was I ended up being in the papers and on TV about my issue and fast forward NYPD settled with me but I did uh, I did an episode I did a, a um, episode of open line with M2 May, Bob Slade, and Bob Pickett, and we talked about, you know, what had taken place, and, you know, they were very, very, very supportive, very, very supportive, so. Look at you making change. Yeah. Yeah. And not just, you so, know, breaking a 20 to give the singles to the strippers. You're making real change. Look at you. Or or to get uh, Harriet Tubman back on a quarter. <laughs> No, it's not Harriet Tubman. No, it's um, Maya Angelou. Was it Maya Angelou? Harriet Tubman, they wanted to put her on some currency and that got on blocked. A 20. They wanted to put her on a 20. Yeah. Yeah. Maya Angelou's on a quarter. And America was like, you done gone too far. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway. Yeah. So. Sorry for the deep, the depressing part of it, but it's part of life, man. Everything you always, you know. Fair point. It is what it is. Have you have you heard about the M and M's? M and M's. Yes. Like, there's more than one Slim Shady. <laughs> well, uh, no, but <laughs> <laughs> what's happening seems to be kind of shady. Um, okay. So they are changing the M and M's. The Eminem characters. They're changing them to okay. Oh, the, okay, please tell me about this. Uh, the parent company for Eminem is Mars, and they are they are woke. They are woke now. Um, okay. From NBC News, because I, I'm citing my source as I read this. Okay. Uh, a makeover for the beloved Eminem's character has prompted many on social media to call for the return of the previous more classic. Quote, hot M&M's. Huh? M&M, yeah. M&M's parent company, Mars Inc., announced Thursday that the anthropomorphized candy characters will have, quote, more nuanced personalities to underscore the importance of self-expression and power of community through storytelling. Okay. Um, so explain that to me like I'm a five-year-old. All right. <laughs> I, I will do just that, sir. <laughs> uh, 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 let me bring it back up and, and that. All right. That means giving the M&M's arms and legs that match their shell colors instead of the tan flesh tone uh, the previous versions had. The two female characters will wear less stereotypically feminine attire as well. Uh, the brown M&M's heels have been lowered to sensible pumps. And in lieu of her signature go-go boots, the green Eminem now sports a pair of, quote, cool laid back sneakers to reflect her effortless confidence. OK, first of all, I, I, we like the green Eminem. Liked the green It reminded M&M. us of some people we knew. Shout out to Eminem, Marsha Meadows, who actually looked like. An Eminem, a, a, a light skinned Eminem. <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't. Mike has his mouth covered. Um, <laughs> what, what... <laughs> <laughs> what, 
Why oh. he has his mouth covered? That nope. can't be good. Nope. I'm not going to say it. Nope. <laughs> What's up? What's up, Marsha? What's poppin'? I'm, I'm, nope. Mm-mm. Nope. Okay. Um, yeah, that's okay. That's, I'm, I'm curious to see what it looks like. I'm curious to see what it, how, how it turns out. All right. Well, let me help you out with that. You probably can't see this, though, can you? Mm, probably not. Yeah, probably you won't see it in, unless I um, shared. So for the viewing audience... Mm. That is the old okay. M and M's. You notice the the flesh tone legs and arms. The go go boots on green. Uh, Brown has on a pair of what appears to be about five, maybe six inch heels. Maybe not quite six, like five inch heels. All right, that's the old. And the new ones, okay, so I see green has sneakers on. Brown has pumps on. (laughs) (laughs) Brown has, um, they described it well when they said sensible pumps. It looked like uh, uh, doctor shoes or something, right? (laughs) Not that M&Ms are sexy, but there's nothing sexy about those pumps. Um, So... Yeah. And their arms, so they have gloves on. Well, they always had gloves on, though, right? Yeah, they always kind of had gloves on. I mean, if they really want to, well, if you really want to be all the way woke, um, they would take the gloves off and kind of, you know, just let them be the color of whatever, you know. You would think. Their shell is. Because the gloves, here's something, I, you know, dates back to minstrel shows. Yes. We've we've discussed this a few times actually. Discussed this before. It's why Bugs Bunny wore wore gloves. It's why all the cartoon characters wore white gloves or whatever the case. It was it was a it was a continuation of the minstrel shows. It was it kind of replaced what you know the violence and things that would happen on minstrel shows. So in any case, these cartoon characters wearing the white gloves still kind of throwing back to minstrel shows. If you ask me, I I would bet you a hundred dollars that the person that did the design had no idea. And they just went yeah. with it because it was a thing that they saw repeated in in cartoons like Bugs Bunny and all of the stuff you mentioned. Yeah. So uh, the company said that the look is part of its, quote, global commitment to creating a world where everyone feels they belong and society is inclusive. It's candy, damn it. Right. I never, Um, ever looked at the Eminem characters and said, you know, they need to be more inclusive. I would enjoy these delicious candies better if they had better personalities uh, and storytelling that fit their individuality. And in the process, why don't you get rid of those go-go boots? No human has ever thought that. Like, what are we doing? Um, I would say, well, hmm. they're Eminems, they're different colors. Yellow, red, orange. Yes, it orange. <laughs> uh, brown, blue, and green. Right. That's kind of inclusive of you know rainbow, all all races and hues and all that type of stuff. Right. That's kind of what I get from it. Just looking at it. But kids ain't looking at it that deep. Now, if they were, if they made them stereotypical to their colors, that would be you know that would be an issue. You know, but. Why, why, you know, why not give them? Well, you know what? Never mind. <laughs> no, it, no. So, I mean, there, there's more to the article, um, but I, I think we can just kind of not go that deeper into the article. Please Google it and read it yourself if you you want to read more nonsense. But why do why why does everything have to be a symbol? Why does everything have to be? a beach of battle for righteousness, right? Like, why can't it just be candy? Why can't the person who designed those well, characters and put that together just say, hey, I think the red Eminem being a dick is kind of funny. I think the the orange one being a worry wart is kind of funny. I think, you know, the, the girls being whatever is kind of funny and it just be funny and it just be okay. 
why does our yeah. candy imagery have to be inclusive? I just, I just don't get it. Okay, well, I can, I can, I, I can argue with that point because everything in this country has, uh, has some sort of message, and because of the racial history and you know, of the United States and you know all the imagery, uh, you know, mostly being rooted in white supremacy even down to the cartoons that kids watched, to the TV shows we watched, to everything, right? There's symbolism and messages in all of it. The dolls kids played with is symbolism in everything, right? And when, you know, so yes, there there, there needs to be a conscious effort to to watch the, how, how images play out and to be, and to, actively be more inclusive and, 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 and to acknowledge that there is, you know, because of the, because of this nation's history, we have to be very specific and careful on, on the images and messages that you put out because, you know, it's not just words. It's not just a picture. There's messages in all of it. So I, I think, I think a lot of things, the, the, the first thing that I think is, if you go looking for it, you're going to find it. Right. So I think one can associate with and or find symbolism in anything, but I don't think everything is symbolic and I don't think okay. it was purposeful. I don't think everything is purposeful. You understand what I'm saying? No, I got you. But back to even what you just said earlier, as we point out that the cartoons were, uh, you know, were a continuation of, uh, what you call the shows? Um, minstrel, uh, uh, minstrel shows. Minstrel shows, right? Down to the white gloves and all that type of stuff. Someone that doesn't know any better just follow suit and go, oh yeah, I'm just going to continue that, that imagery on this and not know what's it, what it's rooted into. And then it continues on and continues on and continues on. And they may not be conscious of it themselves, but someone understanding the history and looking at it and go, hey, mm, you know, that don't look right. It's been, that's, that goes back to this. It's a, it's a message in, and there's a message in all of it. So, so you do have to, you, you do have to kind of pay attention to, you know, these things. There's nothing that doesn't mean anything. There's fair. always, a, there's a meaning to everything. Fair enough. So, with that, with the with the glove thing, there is a clear historical definable definable path to that imagery that the creator, again, I believe, likely wasn't aware of. Right, like mm -hmm. he, he probably just thought the gloves on Bugs Bunny were cool, and he saw that imagery, so he used it. Right. And or mm -hmm. I, I'm assuming a lot and I'm assuming that the creator was a he. Right. Like I'm assuming a lot. Right. So that is a thing that like. It's a clear path to it. But the rest of it is like, why are go-go boots offensive? Why? Why is definable feminine characteristics associated with a feminine character offensive? Why is. The, the red M&M being grumpy, offensive. Like, like mm -hmm. I, I just, I, I think if I sat here long enough, I could probably find an issue with everything or anything, but that doesn't mean that there's an actual issue. I think M&M could have gone on or Mars could have gone on for the next 30 years and not had an issue because I, I, I don't see anywhere in the article where it says this is done as a result of complaints that they had been receiving in the thousands or tens of thousands. And they decided they needed to make a change. It's like, I think everybody in the world just was like, yo, it's just fucking cartoons and candy and, and nobody yeah. associated that. Yeah. But I'm sure somebody did, you know, again, it, you know, it's just recognizing, I mean, this 2020, 2021, and now 2022 has kind of been a reckoning on, you know, on racial injustice and messaging and images and, 
you know, Black Lives Matter and all these different things that have, have been happening. Um, I think it's, you know, I, I don't see a problem with it. Yeah, I mean, for somebody that doesn't, you kind of think like, oh, it's just candy, don't mean nothing. You know, you never know what other people pick up from it. So my So my question becomes, is it possible to go too far? At what point do we say, okay, of course, fuck enough already. <laughs> of course, of course. Balance is the key. Balance is the key to life. So, I mean, yeah, you can go overboard and be, you know, quote unquote, too woke. You know what I mean? Uh, what you say? Uh, good morning. Why would you say that to me, brother? Grand rising. You know, it's, it's, it's possible to go there. You know? <laughs> Grand rising. Seriously? Grand rising. I, hey, listen, that's a real thing. I was just about Hello. to ask if that was a thing. That's a thing? That's, that's oh, a real thing. Jesus Christ. That's a real thing. Hello? Hi? What you want me high? <laughs> Hell is low and you want me high so I don't understand what's happening to me? Look. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Greetings. <laughs> th- this is where... Peace, peace and salutations. This is where I humbly ask our listening and viewing audience for your support. (laughs) Like, share, comment so I can Mm -hmm. monetize this and buy an island and move away (laughs) from human beings. I don't want to be around you people anymore. I'm done with you. (laughs) Okay. Moving on. Someone that should have um, bought an island. Probably where she was. It was a live reporter. Have you seen this? No. Live reporter. The lady hit by the car? Li- hit by a car live on TV. I have not TV. seen it. I have not seen it's, it. Well, I'm going to listen to this. And <laughs> I, I get being a trooper, but it's it's kind of funny to me. So she was live on, she was live on a shoot. Um, I, I don't know if she was reporting on the weather, severe weather alert or whatever the case in uh, West Virginia. Uh, take a listen. Tori Yorgi was just about to start a live report on havoc caused by the icy weather when she became the story. Okay, I just got hit by a car, but I'm okay, Tim. Her first instinct. But this is live TV and everything's okay. To reassure everyone, including the woman who hit her, that she was all right. I'm okay. I saw her face, the woman that was driving the car. She was mortified. So I, you know, I felt really compelled to let her know I am I am good. It's all good. I actually got hit by a car in college too, just like that. Okay. Today you <laughs> Let me let you know a little secret Bless here. Bless her heart. Bless you... her heart. Yeah. Are you okay? I'm all right. You're good. You're fine. I'm all right. <laughs> I was trying to find a video. Uh yeah, if I Oh my God. Like she got hit yeah. by a car. She got hit, like really knocked her. I think the camera ring got out the way. Whoever <laughs> set up the shot with her. He, he saw it coming and got out of Dodge, apparently. <laughs> he was like, she left her in the me. camera, like, I don't insurance ain't that good. <laughs> let, me, let me move out the way. That looks like a car, but the, oh, yeah. Oh, I am knocked on the ass. I am all for the show must go on. I am Mm -hmm. all for, you know, live TV. But if you hit me with a car, you're going to hear some things. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I don't know if I could have not cursed. Yeah. You're going to have to put your hands over little Timmy's ears. Yeah. Oh, the things, the combinations. I'd have pulled a Sue Sue Simmons. The fuck are you doing? (laughs) And it would have been accurate. Oh, I'd have been, I'm going to sue your ass. <laughs> Hit me with your car. Oh, yeah. No, my car. God. Oh, okay. I'm hurt. There was a, stay home. There was a video I saw yesterday. We cannot play that video. So I'll just kind of okay. talk about the story a little bit. Um, it's a, a motorcycle, a guy on a motorcycle. He was, he was in California. He was running... It, it, the motorcycle was stolen, and I think the story said that no police were actually chasing him, but they obviously had yeah. the helicopter and had the camera on him. D- 
dude was gunning it, gunning it, gunning it, hit a car. All you saw was his body in the air. He died. The guy died from that. Yes. It was so like, I'm not one of those people that look for the craziest stuff to watch. And and I I can't, I can't stomach it, but like I I watched it once and was like, Oh, I can't watch it again. Cause it's, it was crazy. I'll let you Google. I'm not even going to link to it in the description. I'll let you Google it (laughs) and find it yourself. Um, but it it's it was crazy. And it, it made me think about when I lived in Los Angeles, I was out there for um maybe two months when I saw my first car chase. Um and oh. yeah, yeah. And and what was crazy, it was like a car chase a week. It it was crazy, right? So I, I'm I'm in the office and you know, everybody's got TVs and the TV's on. So now everybody's got their TV on the car chase and we're watching, and the reporters get like a police representative on the phone to kind of talk, you know, about what's going on while it's happening in real time. And the police officer said 37% of people who run from the police get away. 37%? 37%. And I was sitting at my desk thinking, hmm, I kind of like them odds. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I kind of like those odds. Uh, but I, I thought it was kind of, um, uh, what's the word, reckless for of that course. officer to say that on TV because now people are like me, huh? I kind of like those odds, and now it's going to be more shot. people running. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. I just got to tune up, new tires. Psh, <laughs> I'm, I'm out. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> so okay. Um, I went just to we'll touch on this really quickly. I want to direct your um, attention to um, two messages that I sent you on on Instagram. These are um, the photos. It looks like the covers of some books by Quan Mills. I don't know if these are real books. Oh boy! But I want to. I want you to see the cover and see the title. Um, you ready? Uh, First book. Let me switch my accounts here quickly so I can get in here and take a look at what There's you a, sent me, message. Okay. For those who are listening, <laughs> there is a, it's a picture with two. Um, okay. Oh, yeah. No, hold on. Fit <laughs> gentlemen standing in the background by, you know, in front of windows. In front of them is a black woman with uh, graying hair. In some sort of uh, night attire, we're gonna call it the, uh, lingerie, lingerie and yeah. fishnets. Yeah, and the title of it is uh, "Old Thought Next Door." <laughs> <laughs> that's the, that's that's the name of this book, "Old Thought Next Door." Best-selling author, Quan Mills. Has another ratchet story for you. <laughs> Old thought next door. Meet uh, Vernetta Ernestine Washington. Oh, wait, stop. Wait, wait, no. wait, wait, wait. No. He got the oldest, blackest name he could find. <laughs> I, that's horrible. Uh, that's horrible. Because um, I don't even want to dignify it by associating it with the 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 real person that I know is passed on with most of that name. So we'll, I, we'll I know a couple of folks that. that's got parts of those names, but uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, a feisty seventy six year old woman who doesn't care what you think about her ways, especially for a woman her age. Yeah, she might be a senior citizen, but she'd be the first to tell you age ain't nothing but a number. She's convinced a honeycomb between her legs doesn't taste a day older than forty. <laughs> I don't know. That wine uh, might have turned into vinegar. Uh, oh my goodness! That milk might be spoiled. Your, uh, read more in the old thought next door. Grab your ebook today on Amazon for only ninety nine cents. Paperbacks also available. That's one book. All old right. thought next door. 
<laughs> There's another book. Let's go to the next one. And I, I, I'm not sure if this is real or not. I don't have a description for it, but uh, uh-uh. uh-uh. Uh uh-uh, uh, no. Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> there's a man in there's a man in a suit holding a book, presumably a Bible, with a pair of legs um, in front of him as he stares uh, with desire or confusion or both. Any case, <laughs> the uh, title of the book: Pastors Eat. Mm, it, Kitty, I'll just I'll just replace the pastors eat kitty too by Quan Mills. Trumpet. And- Sorry, wrong wrong sounder. Trumpet. And- Still, again, that's that that doesn't feel right. It's probably you probably read that book. Yeah. Uh. Oh my God, a lot lots pastors of thoughts. Pastors eat coochie too. I love Hughley Dio Hughley's uh hashtag is. <laughs> Hashtag meet the people where they are. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, man. I was so I, I was I, I want to crack jokes. I'm tempted not to because it feels like some of it will lean towards uh uh the uh, um <laughs> Oh my God. The yeah. comments are the best. The comments are the best. Uh, mm-hmm. One, I'm, I'm not even going to say who it is. One person puts speak in tongues. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> one person said, mm-hmm. we're going we gonna to put this in a box, throw it in the ocean so that not even Jacques Cousteau can find it. <laughs> right. Let the church say um, amen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just somebody, a servant in the in the service business somebody just posted I got questions <laughs> <laughs> you and I both drizzled in anointed lube oil <laughs> <laughs> oh boy uh, look oh. this is this is what I have <laughs> talked about and railed on and pushed back <laughs> against since we've started doing this damn show. Okay. And that is why is it when we get an opportunity to tell a story, that's the shit we tell. Like if that, uh, if, if nobody was buying the book, he wouldn't write the book, right? He probably would have wrote one. It didn't sell, wrote another one. It didn't sell. And he would have probably switched up to something else that was working, but he's best selling. People are buying this. Somebody is looking at that and go, yo, I want to read about the 76 year old thought who's getting it in. Like <laughs> what? Ooh. I want to read about the pastor who, um, um, licks kitten. Uh, like, right. Uh, oh, just, oh, no, 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 no. Listen, okay, I, well, it ain't start with him. I mean, you can go back to Dola White. Dolomite, sorry, Dola White is my homie. <laughs> Dolomite, all those stories that Rudy Ray Moore did, those yeah. movies, they weren't the best quality, you know what I mean? Um, you can go back, shoot. Fast forward, the, the you know, current version of, of Dolomite might have been R. Kelly with the In the Closet <laughs> series. Which I thought was horrible. (laughs) It was all horrible. It was comical, but it was horrible. Horribly written. I mean, understanding now, you're listening to a man that not really literate. (laughs) So it is what it is. But does that mean most of the population, you know, is where he is in terms of mentality? No. But if if we're okay, if we want to be woke, right? Mm-hmm. If we want to better our image, if we want to move mm-hmm. forward, this doesn't get us there, right? This is anti woke. So in, instead of uh, complaining about representation in M and M's, why don't we complain about 
garbage writing that does not present our people in the best of lights and and I mean, creates this false narrative about who we are. OK, these these are two books by one writer. It just means we need more writers out there. It has to be a spectrum. It has to be diverse representation and not just look to one to represent all. That's all it means. That's what it really means. There needs to be there needs to be more uh, more messages, more, you know, representation out there. All right. Otherwise, that's what we get. We are we are. Hang on. My little one is calling here. Answer. Ladybug, what's happening? Hold on. Uh oh. Your father's old and he doesn't know how to work a phone. <laughs> <laughs> he sees the quiet part out loud. Okay, why can't I hear you when you talk? Um, probably because it's volume related. I know my, my volume is up as loud as it'll go. Speaker? Could be. Not on Bluetooth? Okay, I'm going to... First off, your hair looks very nice. Let me see it again. Oh, look at you. Look at that face. That's why I give you things. Um, <laughs> I'm going to call you back because I'm, I'm recording right now. You need help. You need help editing. <laughs> you probably That's did. All right. I'll call you back in a, in, a, in a little bit. Daddy loves you. Oh, that's just so sweet. My daughter is See? following in my footsteps. Um, that's excellent. She is taking interest in editing and videos, and she starts to she started to put videos up on YouTube. Yeah, she's doing her thing. I will not share her YouTube channel. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. I don't know if we have time for both of these other two things. Um, Oh, I got, um, I got one more. Media. I got one more for you too. Uh, all, right. all right. Well, you run it. Let's go. All right. I may have um, to send it to you to, because you can't hear what I what I have. Okay. Just to just to put a pin in it. Um, I want to talk about uh, the rapper Ti has now taken up doing stand up comedy. Apparently, I saw that. Um, and also, Mitch McConnell has as well. <laughs> Why am I afraid of the Mitch McConnell one and not afraid of the T.I. one? The Mitch McConnell one. Oh, you, you come on. You've you haven't heard or seen this one. I have not. OK, uh, I wasn't going to get into it just yet, but let's go. Um, Mitch McConnell was talking about uh, voting rights. You know, the voting bill didn't pass. And. uh our president wanted to make sure he said he wanted to put the people that were for it or against it on the record. And so it didn't pass. And so, you know, it's a part of public record who voted for it and who didn't. Okay. Mitch McConnell got on and said, hold on, said something very interesting. He said the quiet part out loud. But after tonight's Senate vote, Republican Minority Leader Mitch McConnell of Kentucky made these controversial remarks to reporters seemingly making a distinction between black voters and Americans. Well, the concern is misplaced because if you look at the statistics, African American voters are voting in just as high a percentage as Americans. African American voters are voting just as high percentage as Americans. <laughs> That's hilarious. Mitch McConnell's doing, he got a, he got a promising career in stand-up. That's, that's, he's going to go far. He, he just old. <laughs> he not racist, he old. He just <laughs> no, he racist and old. He an old racist. <laughs> Let's not get it confused. Uh, Mitch oh. McT uh, McTurtle is an old racist, you know. Uh, yes. he, he, he talked like his teeth he, are coming out. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. boy! Uh, you know anyway, what? I'm not gonna. I'm not. I, there's, there's not much to be said about that. It kind of <laughs> self-explanatory. Like, 
like uh what what is her name? Uh uh Valletta Ernestine Washington. I'm not gonna touch that. <laughs> <laughs> Well done. <laughs> I ain't gonna touch that. <laughs> All right. What was it? What, what what you got in your mind? <laughs> so I I just shot it over to you, so you can play it for all of the good folks. It's a minute twenty three uh, video that I ran across today, um, mm-hmm. which is you know it'll explain to you why I'm so grr and against this wokeness because this is another example, in my opinion, of wokeness gone too far wokeness gone too far okay how do you say it so. run the track run the track okay okay i've got to rant for a minute just when i thought school couldn't get any weirder it did today Masab. first of all I, i'm sorry let me just stop it there for a quick second she looks like a demon <laughs> like, it, it she is looks, yeah she looks possessed um okay i'm sorry back to it Okay, okay, I've got to rant for a minute. Just when I thought school couldn't get any weirder, it did today. I'm a sub, and the most important thing we do is take roles so the school gets paid. So I'm looking at the seating chart as I'm going up and down the rows and marking who's here and who's not. I get to the third row and I hear this, meow. Excuse me? Excuse me? I start looking on the ground. Go to the fourth row, everything's good. Go to the fifth row, everybody's there. Then I hear, meow. I'm like, okay, what's up with that? Who's doing it? And this little girl in the very front row says, you have to meow back at him. He identifies as a cat. Are you kidding me? I said, is there a litter box in here somewhere? My sarcasm self probably shouldn't have said that. He gets up and he storms out of the classroom. And I'm like, rough. And of course, the entire class is laughing. And I think, oh, no problem, no foul. I go to the office. You ready for this? You check out. They said, we no longer need your services. If you can't identify with all the children in the classroom and you wonder why they don't have any subs. I told the lady, I said, I didn't know cats were considered people. I thought they were pets. Another school off my list. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a, a moment of silence for common sense. <laughs> it, right. it, it died in this country. I, I'm okay. Assuming that what she's saying is absolutely on board and correct and truthful, right? And that she wasn't, you know, she didn't actually turn and call it um, call the student a nigga. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't say something else. You know, there's not that there's anything else missing from the story. Just kind of taking her word for it. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. That's very crazy. Um, Listen, (laughs) so. So when when the debate, when the debate over being identified. Reached my reached me and kind of got into my world and I started paying attention to it. It was it was around the time Jordan Peterson was kind of uh, becoming popular. And if you don't know who Jordan Peterson is, um, he's a a Canadian educator who got into uh, a little bit of hot water and a lot of, a lot of, of popularity for telling Canada, no, I will not um, be legally mandated to use certain words, right? Government should not control speech was his standpoint. Um, okay. A lot of people around that time said, if, if you start here, where will it go? Right. The slippery slope argument. Gotcha. Will people start identifying as animals. Right. And then everybody said, that's ridiculous. No one would do that. You're introducing <laughs> ridiculous arguments into a conversation to break down the need for us to be more inclusive and understanding of people. And now here we have a teacher who lost her job because she would not identify this child as a cat. Allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah. I'll give you that. I'll give you the allegedly. Allegedly. Because, I mean, again, it's ridiculous and I can't see 
um, a school really going along with that. I, I don't see a school going along with that. I, yes, you must identify if they, if this person decides to identify as a cow or dog or whatever, whatever they say they are, they, that, that's what they are. I, I, I don't see, because that sounds like a, that sounds like a mental health issue. You know what I mean? If, if you want to identify as an animal, and we're not talking spirit animal, we're talking actual, now nah, I'm a horse. You know what I mean? Or, or, or if Doja Cat was, if back when Doja Cat, did, when she did the song, Bitch, I'm a Cow, and she was really, <laughs> and she was really saying she was a cow. Look, yeah. I, I think if we were talking 10, 15 years ago, I don't think any school would, would go with it. I think now, I think the vast majority of them would. They are, people are terrified of being canceled. Like there's a lot I want to say that I, I'm not going to say. It's just too dangerous mm. to say it, right? Um, yeah. I Look, I'll say this. I, I believe one of the things that the world needs more of is compassion. Old thoughts. Oh, sorry. No, no. My bad. Yeah, we already got enough of them. Uh, <laughs> and they're on uh, the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Sorry. Okay. Continue. If it, if it wasn't for old thoughts, I'd never get laid. Um, <laughs> that 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 was a, a terrible joke, Gabby. Don't. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> Yeah, I'm saying thank you. Um, <laughs> my inbox start blowing up with old thoughts. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Sixty plus, hit them up. <laughs> hey, everybody need love, right? Oh, um, but no, I, th- I think what the world needs a little bit more of is compassion, um, understanding, um, but. I question Mm -hmm. how much am I supposed to participate in, in your delusion, self image, personal narrative. How much am I supposed to participate in that? Right? Like I'm not going to stand in the way of it. I'm not going to take it down. I'm not going to try to remove it. You get to live the life that you want to live but why am I being forced to participate? Yeah, there's a lot of there's, there's a lot to it. I, I, again, I, I don't want to offend. You know, this. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. I'm gonna leave it there. Um, here's here's what I will say right now. Um, even if we can't, even if the audio is not allowed to play, um, people, you need to see these visuals. Um, let's just throw it back real quick. To Doja Cat when she declared to the world, "Bitch, I'm a cow." People don't remember and the, the twerking and with with the cow print uh, outfit on. Yeah, that's what we need. Yeah. Right so now. so everybody watching on YouTube, I, I we had to mute all of that for copyright reasons. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I, I I will I will give you a, a synopsis very quickly. Really pretty yeah. girl, really nice track, really horrible lyrics. Oh yeah, terrible. Oh yeah, but who cared about the lyrics at that point? It wasn't even about. It was the visual. She's a star. <laughs> She's got a bright future behind her for sure. And apparently, in front of her, like right. Okay, this is awful. That's a good place. Yeah, it was terrible. Oh yeah, it was a terrible song. I ain't never listened to it because of the song was great. The video is awful too. Oh, very much. But all that bouncing and jiggling in the video was kind of <laughs> cool to look at. <laughs> you notice I ain't t- took my a- eyes off the screen yet as I say right. how horrible <laughs> it is. <laughs> this is terrible. I can't believe. This, this garbage. <laughs> Whoa, who would put this out? <laughs> Oh, I'd put I mean, it out. the color grade on this screen is terrible. <laughs> I'd put it out. What kind of milkshake is that? This, that's not the kind that brings all the boys to the yard. <laughs> it brings a million views to YouTube. That's what it brings. Right, right, right. Who did her makeup? 
<laughs> He's looking at everything but that ass. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, folks, hey, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Um, some more of this conversation will continue in the after show. So if yeah, you're watching gonna, on YouTube. We're going to have fun in the after show. We're doing a, 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 a drinking challenge, apparently, a drinking game. Yeah. And we invite you to uh, join with us. Um, thanks for, again, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. If you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe, share, comment, and uh, we'll see you on the side. Unpoppinshow.com and uh, on all socials at un. Poppin' Show. Thanks again. Peace.